Hi all, this is Andrew. Today I'll be arguing that not only is free good, it is essential. So, I'm talking about free as in free beer, free food, not free as in freedom. Although one could argue that free goods can lead to freedom. I'll explain that later. So why make this video? Well recently I read an article on basic income, and many commenters were arguing against giving anything away for free. They argued free leads to idleness, free goods aren't appreciated, people should work in order to buy goods, and goods are not, and should not, be free. So in this video I'll argue that not only is free good, it is essential to life. So the human construct of free. So money is the antithesis of free, isn't it? Money is a human construct, nobody's arguing that it isn't. Therefore, free is also a human construct. The free that I'm talking about is the opposite of money, isn't it? Because we have money, because we pay for things and that's, that's what we do in our society, then free is the opposite of that, not paying for something. If there was no money, if there was no means of paying for something, then we wouldn't even have the term free, would we? What other animals use currency? Do deers charge each other for plants? Obviously these are ridiculous questions, they're rhetorical. Primitive tribal groups are similar. They live off the land. The point is that it's only the human race, the current human race, that uses money or uses currency. It's a fiction that we've invented. So why do modern humans use money? Convenience? Easy to carry? Well, that were the original meanings, uh, the original reasons. Easy to hoard? Easy for the rich to be rich? Those latter two are ones that I would argue are the most modern reasons that we keep money. Um, I argue about that in one of my videos called uh, Analogy of the Monkey Lord. Fiat. Now what does fiat mean? Fiat money is the money that we have today, if you don't already know. Fiat money is basically government decreed currency. The paper in your wallet or the coins in your wallet are basically worth nothing, are they? Except for the fact that the government have made a law saying that they are worth money and that every business must accept them, at least in within your country. So fiat money is just government decreed money. In nature, I argue that free is the default position. Not to say that work isn't required. For example, tribal members must hunt or gather their food. Animals must spend time looking for food. So a deer can just wake up and it goes out and eats grass, doesn't it? It doesn't have to go earn a living or anything else like that, it just goes and gets what it needs, as does almost every other animal. Uh, tribal members? Again, especially ones that live in isolated communities, such as in the Amazon or somewhere, they just go out and get their food. There's no expectation that they have to go pay for it. Of course, they have to put effort in, but that's not the same as paying for something. Free is natural and essential. When a couple have a baby, do they expect their baby to pay for its food, clothing and board? Of course not. That's ridiculous. Do we blame the baby for being a slacker, or not appreciating the free goods we give it? Again, it's ridiculous, isn't it? A baby can't. It, it doesn't have any concept of being a slacker, or appreciating appreciation. It just drinks milk. By giving the baby free goods, are we harming it? Quite the opposite. Free is essential. So we're not teaching the baby to be uh, dependent on the state or whatever, are we? We're just giving it something that it needs. So it doesn't harm it in any way. Actually, it needs it, doesn't it? It's essential. If we didn't, if the mother didn't feed the baby, then the baby would simply die, wouldn't it? So baby needs free stuff, just as a baby deer needs free stuff or a baby cow or whatever, right? So when we become adults, why does it suddenly become bad to give stuff away for free? Why is it bad to provide people with free food, free education, universal health care, basic income? Yeah, why are these things sometimes considered bad? For example, in Australia we have free education, as do many countries I believe. 
Are people up in arms about that, saying, oh, we're giving the slackers free education? No. But at one stage they were. At one stage the rich people did not want the commoner getting into free education. Education was a, a realm solely for the rich. But now we have it, don't we? Everyone accepts it. Uh, how about universal health care? In Australia we have Medicare. Everyone can go to the hospital if they need it. If you break your arm, you can go to the emergency department and somebody will fix it. Is everyone up in arms? Is everybody protesting? Oh, we're giving slackers free health care. Maybe some people are, but in general it's accepted that Medicare is a good system. I'm sure places like America that don't have universal health care, there'd be people who are arguing against it, saying, no, you can't do that. We need to keep our private hospitals to make it sustainable or whatever other reason they say, right? So in Australia, we've knocked off a couple of these on this list, but basic income, which is just the next logical progression in my eyes, we're arguing against it, just as we did for universal health care and we did for free education. So eventually we're going to have a basic income. It doesn't matter what people say now. I think these things are not bad. Our capitalist society has convinced many of us that we must pay to get good quality goods. We must work hard in a job we don't like to buy the latest luxury. Hmm. So yes, capitalism has a big part to play in this. All the ads on TV, all the things that we teach our children. Basically, we te we're teaching our children that they must go out and work in order to get stuff they like. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't teach children. Like I say, free does not destroy work. I'm not advocating idleness. Individual families can still teach their children the benefit of hard work, unrelated to money. So helping out around the house is a benefit in itself. Clean clothes, tidy house, nice food, etc. Spending time together, going for walks, staying fit, building a shed. Anything that you can do at home that improves your household, the expectation isn't to receive money, is it? It's to help yourself, to help your family. Like my son, he helps out around the house. Does he get money for it? No. Does he expect money for it? No. He does it because he wants to help, or he because he does it because we're teaching him to help out. Family members help each other not for monetary gain, but because they enjoy helping each other. And other reasons, but that's one of the reasons. Of course, you could raise a child to be completely selfish and not want to help, but that's up to the parent, isn't it? That's a parent, that's a mistake of the parent. If we teach children that their community is their family, then the whole idea of requiring monetary compensation to help your neighbour becomes redundant. So if we just teach each other, teach our children, not only are their immediate family important, but also their community around them, their neighbours, then money becomes less of an issue. When I was a kid, my mum taught me that money wasn't the be-all and end-all, and I often went out around helping my neighbours. I mowed my old lady's lawn for free, or maybe she gave me some, she gave me some biscuits or whatever. I helped people with their computers because I was into computers. I helped people with their computers. I didn't want any payment. Often people would offer me payment, but I'd usually refuse because I didn't see the point. I thought, they're, they're my friends, they're my neighbours, I'll help them. But then later, of course, I got into the real world. When I say the real world, I mean the corporate world, where everything needs money and you have to go and do some bullshit job. Scarcity to freedom. Okay, free Wi-Fi is abundant, at least in my city and within Australia. Has that destroyed people's appreciation of the internet? Of course not. I mean, I go to a coffee shop or wherever, I use their free internet. Of course they'd probably expect uh, our patronage, don't they? Or I go to a shopping centre, Wi-Fi is free. Air is free, the air we breathe is free. Does anybody not appreciate it? Probably the people who least appreciate air are the factory owners, the rich capitalists who pump carbon into the air or pump smoke into the air. So although many of you will say, oh, air is abundant, well, not really. It's it, Maybe it is abundant on Earth, but it is a scarce resource in that if you consider the universe as a whole, it's very, very, very rare. So we're lucky to have it on Earth, so obviously we need to take care of it, don't we? Scarcity is often a human construct. An iPhone is scarce because Apple say it is. An iPhone doesn't cost that much to produce. I've heard estimates 
ranging from about $100 or $120 or something for an iPhone, depending on the model, of course. But yet they sell those models for like $1,300 or $1,500, depending, depending on which model you're talking about. Now, is that fair? Of course not. I mean, they're outsourcing the labor to countries where labor is cheap. Apple are still making millions or billions of dollars or whatever they're up to now. This whole idea of an iPhone being scarce, well, actually, it's not even that scarce, is it? I mean, how many people do you know with iPhones? There's tons of people with them, but they still charge a fortune for them because they want to make it look like a premium product, a must-have product. Due to automation and robotics, many paid jobs will disappear. A universal basic income will be required, at least during the transition period. So nobody's arguing that automation and robotics aren't going to display some jobs. But it's definitely going to happen. Now, capitalism is awfully good at replacing jobs though. We have to remember that. So in the past, just as, you know, people who cleaned up horse manure off the street, uh, they thought they were going to be completely out of the job, weren't they? Because cars were replacing horses or horse groomers or stablers or whoever else, right? But of course, more jobs came to replace those jobs. People are saying things differently now. They suggest that many jobs will be replaced by automation, not just like medial, sorry, not just menial jobs. For example, accountants might be replaced or a significant part of their job might be replaced. So it's going to be a much bigger impact, the effect of automation and robotics. Free money will actually promote freedom. People will have the ability to study or to create or to do anything that they desire. Yeah, so if you're currently working at a crappy restaurant, waiting tables, and you hate your job and you barely get enough money, but because you need that money, you have no time to go out and study, no time to go out and better yourself. You're just kind of stuck in a rut. If you get some free money, even if it's just a minimum amount of money, that's all basic income is. It's going to be a minimum amount of money that you don't need. You've got enough money just to get the basics in life. Well, people will have more chance to study, won't they? To better themselves. In the future, free will become the norm again. Money will ultimately disappear as everything can be produced cheaply and efficiently. I don't know if this is the near future. It might be a hundred years from now. I'm not sure. But ultimately, we're going to have machines that create everything very, very efficiently and cheaply. Whether that's a machine that can make pizza for 10 cents each, or a machine that can build a house for a thousand dollars. Either way, abundance will become the norm. And in that situation where you can just go out and yeah, okay, I can go out and get some food and nobody, I don't have to worry about paying anybody or anything, then money is just not no longer needed, is it? It'll just become a redundant thing. So in conclusion, free is good. Free is a human construct. Just as money is a human construct, they are polar opposites. Free is natural. Just as a deer can freely graze on grass, a baby receives free food and board from its parents. Free is essential. The baby needs milk, the deer needs grass. Charging for these things would be abhorrent. Of course they would. The parent charging the baby for food would be abhorrent. Family members help each other without expectation of monetary gain. Most families, I would suggest. Members of the community should do the same. And we could. Free promotes freedom. Future societies will be free societies. Free is good. Yes, yeah, so future societies will be free societies, not just as in freedom, but many of the resources will be essentially free. Thank you for listening to my presentation. If you have any comments, please leave them for me below, and I'll talk to you next time. Thank you.